Very well. So this is the third part of the uh, simulation of the held back array system in uh, the neodyme magnets separated in 12 different parts. So as we have here, this is the same geometry as the last two videos, and I'm going to go to the 2D uh, design, 2D view of it, following up what I just have done in the last couple of videos. And then what I have to do now is to create the relative coordinate systems in order to simulate the image you see right now. And in order to simulate that kind of image, what I have here is that I have to create uh, the magnetic, but the, 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 the relative coordinate system following up the arrows you see in the image. So this is good. So let's create it. So we have an upper arrow for both the up. Yeah, this is right. Both the up, down, and the sideways ones. Very good. So I only need one for all of them, one relative coordinate for all of them. And we have a downwards, a kind of making a third degree angle with the Y direction to the left side. Very good. So let's, let's click. Very good. Nice. What we have here now, we have uh, to the other side, making the third degree with the X direction as well. Now it's following the axes that are there following up. But if you imagine there's axes here, that's what I'm saying to be third degrees uh, aligned with. Very good. And then I think we are done because all of the other ones, they are, uh, they are, um, there are uh, repetitions and they are all of the other arrows they are the same but in different places so let's follow up assigning to each one of the of the materials of the first of all we want to select the global coordinate that's good so we can have a reference then we're going to select the materials uh, to match up with the arrows so the coordinate, the relative coordinate needs to match up with the geometry we want to have that magnet to be, uh, the flow field of the magnet to be following the direction of the arrow. Uh, this is good. So for the first one, we show uh, orientation, as I said before, we can go here with the, yeah, so it's following up now. You see the, the center uh, reference changed. That's very good. And now I'm going to do the same with all the other ones uh, and follow up the video a little bit. OK, we are done. Very good. So now that we are done, we need to assign materials to all of those uh, geometries we have here, assigning materials uh, to the neodyme magnet alloy. So we go and then there's the neodymium magnet alloy right here. Very good. Now we need to create a sphere of influence in which the calculus will be done. The numerical um, simulation will be done. So let's put a, a minus 50 here. I, I, click, I, I clicked in the rectangle upstairs uh, before. So minus 50 here, minus 50 here as well. Keep zero on the Z axis. OK, now I put 100 here and 100 here as well. Very good. So this will create, well, we have a perfect square zone of influence. We want to select all of those edges to create a balloon in which we will apply the boundary I want. Okay, here. Very nice. And I want also to make it transparent so we can see what's beyond. Great. Okay, so now it's transparent. This is very good. Now I'm following up. I can both create a 3D view already, or I can simulate in the 2D view. I'm going to create a 3D view. And here. Then go back to the 2D view so we can see both the flux lines. Hold on. Yeah, good. Both the flux line and the magnetic vectors. They are better to be seen here. But I'll put the 3D in the report I'm going to do to university. Good. So now I want to select all of the materials I have here and create a field. So, oh, first of all, my bad. We haven't done the simulation yet. So start setup first, validate everything's doing fine, and create a mesh. 
computer is going to perform some working now. It's calculating. Very good, it's done. And it shows that everything is normal. Great, let's select all the geometries, follow up to the field, flux line, very good. All objects, done. Okay, we have a different pattern here. And we can see this pattern to be, if you abstract a little bit, should be quite like the snowflake view we have in the picture I showed you before. You see here in the middle, it has like some lines being diverted from the center and following up both, I, I cannot say which direction they are now, but they are either following this direction, this direction. In order to you, for you to see the direction they're going, we need to see the direction of the magnetic field vectors. And we are going to do that now. So coming up here, we have both magnetic, oh no, my bad. We have the, the magnitude of the, the magnetic field and the vector. So let's go with the vectors, all objects and done. Let's see what we have. We have quite a complex system going on. Let's uh, make it a bit simpler by, yeah, this is good. But even though we see these, those vectors, what they I'm saying, they are, they are, there are a lot of vectors coming out. This is a view we can't say a lot from it, but I prefer to see what's happening from a different kind of, from a different uh, aspect. So I'm going to turn blind sign on this for now, and I'm going to select all the geometry again. And a better way to see the what's going on with the vectors is to create a string line related to the edges of the, the, the magnetic. And this is good because now you can see the zone of influence of the magnetic field uh, inside and outside of the of the magnets here. And as you can see, we have just as the image says, that's this is a this is quite a good view for what the image is saying. So I'm gonna put the image here again, and you can see that the flow is going to follow a diversion here. It goes like um so this one's going this way, and this one's going this way, and in the middle of them you have the canceling out of them. So when two of them touches, so you can see you can see it quite clearly here. For example, uh, you have like this one going this way and this one going this way. And right in the middle of them, you have the canceling out of them. And this is shown right here. And in the middle of the whole center, you have the canceling out of all of them because they're not going that direction. They're going this way, which follows up with the idea we mentioned before. So actually there's a flow here, and here, and here, and here. Very good. So let's go to the let's go to the 3D dimension, to the 3D view in order to see what's going on with the magnetic magnitude. Very well. So if I'm not wrong, this is the design we want. Very good. Let's select all the solids in it. It already has the materials being assigned. So we want to do a setup first. You don't have to select the, the geometry now. You validate, everything's doing fine, and then we do the meshing. Since it's 3D, it has a bit more of the complexity, so the mesh is going to take a little bit longer. But that's okay. Okay, so uh, the mesh has have been done here, and what I want to show you is the results of the field in the plane XY. So let's go to field overlays and then choose the, the field, magnitude, no objects. Let's see what it has. Good. And then I select, uh, first of all, I'm going to select, actually, I'm going to select all of the geometry and I'm going to put like it to be quite transparent so we can see what it's beyond. So we can see the flow right here. This is good. Uh, Right here, good. So as we can see, like there's quite a quite a irrelevant uh, magnetic field outside of the the magnet system, and in the middle of it, you have a quite a low zone of influences. It's 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 almost zero. You see, it's uh, square to uh, not not square, but it's like minus zero zero five. So it's really really low. 
but here in the gray area, you have a bit of influence, and that's what you see in the vectors. Uh, those are converged into the sides, and as we can see in the, in the images as well. Very good. So now we complete these sequences of uh, Halbeck array systems, and I'm going to show the rectangular Halbeck array system in the next video. Thank you very much.